Hey guys, welcome to the tutorial. This is going to be on the vector displacement maps or the VDMs that are now static in the new release of Blender 3.5. And as always, if you have Blender Launcher, which you can just go to any search engine and grab it, uh, you want to go ahead and download that and start downloading. And what you're going to get is the February 22nd, which literally is just yesterday or hours ago and so that one now comes static with the setup you're going to need so you can create your own vector displacement maps and this is just a little quick one i created myself and we will go in and i will show you how to do that you can create alien landscapes uh, pretty quick there are some obvious uh, displacements that you can get you know and just kind of throw in there but being able to make your own is going to be really fun. So, like, And this kind of thing has been available in ZBrush for a while, but now it has come to Blender. And as I've always said, the um, competition is going to be getting very close for usage as new studios come out that are solely using Blender, which is probably the, the workflow that it's going to have to be. But as it's integrated and as people get familiar with it and start trusting it, it's going to be huge. So stick it out. It's going to be a fun tutorial. Let's jump right in. All right, so we're going to keep this fun and simple. So let's just drop in a mesh grid, bring it up to like 50 or so for the subdivisions. 10 is good, just so you can see it. Then let's jump in to face select and see how that looks. Not enough. So I'm going to subdivide that one more time. And then I'm going to throw a multi res on this and subdivide that a couple few more times. All right, so that looks good. So just control tab, go into sculpt mode, and you can do whatever you wish. You can grab the snake hook, something like that, and make some interesting alienish terrain looking pieces, something like that. And then I'll go to Blender Kit, and I'm going to pull out the brushes, and I'm just going to grab, say, one brush right about here. I like this one, and just kind of build in. A couple of little funky spots here, right? It's my alien terrain. And the cool thing is you can paint this out anywhere you want. And this will be your new brush. If you make something custom, you've got it. It's yours. So I'm going to go to object mode. Go ahead and horizontally split this. Let's pull up a shader editor. We're going to build the bake system for it from scratch so come to this and give it a new material and what we want to do is let's come in here and grab the principal bsdf and eliminate that grab the surface and left pull off of that and type in image texture okay it may not let me grab it from there so i'll just type in image texture here and get the uh, shift a image texture and we'll drop that down like here. I got just a little bit ahead of myself. So what I'll do is I'll hit the space bar and type in combine and X, Y, Z. And I'm going to place that space bar search, separate X, Y, Z. And go ahead and put that in here. And then we can duplicate that like right here. Let's connect the X and the Y here and then the Z right here. And now we're going to need some vector math nodes. So go ahead and spacebar search and type in a vector, if I can spell. And just get a couple of vector math nodes. I'm going to put one like right here, and I'll just shift D duplicate these to right here. Uh, let's put this one to subtract. That looks pretty good. And now I'm going to take the vector to vector here. And I'm going to go ahead and make leave this one as add. And I'll make this one multiply. Now let's go ahead and tag in the vector here to the top. And then we'll take this vector to the bottom here. And now what we want to do is type in C-O-O-R for texture coordinate. And you kind of place this somewhere down in here that'll be fine and let's take the object to the top of the subtract and we'll take this object 
to the XYZ separate right here. And then we can take the UV here to the top of the add. And now you've effectively got your little bake system uh, made. So what we can do is go ahead and connect this. You know, still getting that lag in 3.5 that if you try to zoom in in the uh, viewport here in node editing, it just lags out. All right, so you'll take this vector and attach that to surface. You'll leave the image texture alone, but you will come in here and click new on the image texture. And once you've done that, 512 is the recommendation for this. You need low resolution, it's, so it doesn't matter. And just go ahead and click OK. And if you want to rename this to something, you can do that. And you can say, my first displacement. And hit Enter. OK, so this is going to be real simple. What you want to do is just go over to the Render Properties. And I'll pull this up and extend that out a little bit. Scroll all the way down to your bake. And you can do is we can go ahead and bake this and this will bake out now and it'll bake out our map for us so go ahead and bake you'll see texture bake pop up and while that's doing that i'm going to do a little vertical split here and i'll pull up the uv editor so we can see what's actually going on all right that actually took a little bit long that took about three minutes for me to bake that one which is a little unusual but i did subdivide the heck out of it so be kind of careful your first time if you got a slow pc you're gonna possibly be stuck in there for hours so i'm going to come here to the uv editor and i'll click the drop down for the browse the linked images and i'm just going to go ahead and type in my first and there we go my first displacement has come up it should look like this very very closely now this image is not saved hence the little asterisk so come here and glow glow it's glowing yes come here and go to save as now this is super important you have to save this as an exr file there we go so save that as an exr put it somewhere you can find it i'm going to throw mine into downloads my first displacement dot exr and i'm trying to go slow here but fast enough it's valuable all right so save that image and that is pretty much the majority of the battle. Now it's just going to be about settings. All right, now for the easy part, you really just need to understand uh, you know, how to do this. So if you go grab your original plane or whatever you've got, wherever you want to paint on, go into sculpt mode. And you can do this from this menu. It appears everywhere. So it kind of doesn't matter. You can come up to texture you'll see vector displacement. You'll have to turn that on, but it will be grayed out if you don't have it on area plane. That's where it's at for now, and that's the only way it's gonna work. So I could come in here and pick, uh, let's see, one. I've done a few of them, so I'll just pick any of them. It really doesn't matter, and I'm on vector displacement. And then you may wanna change the fall off if it's not working right, but now you can just go ahead and paint these in. And the really cool thing is that these now overlap as well. So that's something you could not have gotten with a standard height map or a displacement. And so this vector displacement is going to be exceptionally powerful. And I can just draw in these interesting little landscapes and you see how they work. This is pretty darn cool. Now in the instructions for this, it does say to move the uh, fall off to constant. But when you do that, it's a little bit weird. I don't really like the results there. So I've been leaving mine on smoother, which just kind of comes in looking good. But of course, if you know a whole lot more about sculpting, you can jump in there and kind of do whatever you want. And so these can be placed anywhere you want to create some pretty cool terrain effects and give you uh, like an, you know, an LOD. Uh, if you're developing a landscape, you can have a nice level of detail depending on how you make it and, and save a lot of space doing stuff like this. And also you can come back into object mode and shade that smooth, make it look a little bit better. 